The next stop on my sip and stay tour through the Willamette Valley is the town of Newburgh. There are many tasting rooms downtown making it a great destination to discover new wines. My first stop is Artisanal Wine Cellars, a small family run winery. Well, I always tell people, you know, if you're coming out here, do make it out into the hills, but like, we're open later. A lot of the downtown wineries stay open until f to six, you know, we're open until eight, at least three days a week. And so I'm like, go out and do some of that and they close at four and then come down here and have a little wine tasting and then go have dinner. I mean, it's a great way to spend the day. My first wine that I have for you is a Pinot Blanc. This is a 2013. We do this in stainless steel, so it's got a lot of nice bright acid, kind of a green apple note to it. So this is a Chardonnay, this is a 2015, half oak, half stainless steel. Essentially we're making an oak Chardonnay and a stainless Chardonnay and then mixing them up, yeah. But it really was interesting to see that they were fully formed Chardonnays before we ever put them wow. together. So we source our fruit from a variety of different places and that allows us to do a couple of things. Um, one, we can go wherever the fruit is growing the best. So certain varietals, bigger varietals, we wanna to go to Southern Oregon um, with the Pinots. Being here in the Willamette Valley is really important because we have all these little AVAs, these sub areas, these designates that provide these different characteristics and qualities. And so the other thing that we get to do is have multiple interpretations of things, particularly with our Pinots. We can have three, four different versions of Pinot Noir um, and kind of highlight everything Oregon has to offer instead of limiting ourselves to just what we can grow here. We make our wine um, at a facility called August Cellars, which is right here in Newburgh, right. just a few miles down the road, actually. Um, and they house about eight different wineries, little guys like us. Um, it allows us to stay small and do what we want to do and keep it just the family. Keep it just the three of us and you know whatever aunts, uncles, and cousins we rope into it when we need. <laughs> well, I love yeah. that people like winemakers are sharing a space. I think, yeah. I think that's really cool. This is really kind of a creative outlet for my dad um, because it combines so many things, uh, math and science and all of this stuff, but it's also creative. You're also creating something. And you know, with engineers, there's always that kind of joke that they take things apart to see how they work. Well, with wine, in order to take it apart, you make it. So I'm gonna move into our reds here, our Pinot Noirs. Um, I have two of them. So both from the same vintage, made by the same winemaker, both from the Willamette Valley, but from two different vineyards and two different designates. So they're drastically different. This one's brighter, it's got that red cherry fruit, it's got a little spice. Um, and 14 was a really warm year, so they're not exactly subtle wines. Um, you know, they were nice ripe fruit, but. So this is the Duke's Vineyard Pinot Noir from the Eola Amity Hills. Um, it is very different. So just being, you know, in two little towns in the same area, you're getting totally different wines. And we're having, you know, volcanic soil versus sedimentary soil. We're having elevation changes. We have little microclimates and, and pockets of weather that are different, and all of that impacts our wine, especially Pinot. Pinot is really a um, particular grape, it's, and it, it, it truly expresses where it's from. Wow, every single wine is different, really different. Because we don't own vineyards, we source our fruit, we can do that. Yeah. Artisanal is truly a family-run winery. I met Mia's mom, Patricia, in the tasting room and asked why her husband, Tom, started making wine. Well, I always tell people beer <laughs> because Tom used to be a uh, home beer maker and he belonged to the Oregon Brew Crew and he had some friends who, um, like him, they just kind of fermented everything. And uh, he, one day, I think somebody said, you gotta, you gotta, you live in Oregon, you gotta do wine. So he immediately ran out, grabbed my daughter Mia, uh, they went and bought grapes, and then they picked them, and I think he bribed Mia with Barbie dolls to help him pick, the, <laughs> pick the, the grapes. And we started making wine at home. We did that for a number of years, and then I think it was in 2005, actually shortly before that, we kind of decided, well, we should just do this commercially. So we kicked him out of the garage at that point, and uh, he started taking all of the winemakers' classes at Shemekada. And um, then in 2005, we launched. We love Pinot Noir, we, but we like to do ones that are a little different. So we make sure that the areas they are from are from very distinct. So one of our vineyards uh, is in the Dundee Hills, one is in the Shadayla Mountains AVA, uh, one's in Amity. This is some incredible art by Benita Cole. Um, she is our artist for June. We change our art every, every month. 
uh, and it, we kind of have it coincide with the uh, First Friday Art Walk. We have a very comfortable place here, um, which is you know kind of second home for us. We have a little bit nibbles of food and, and little bites that we offer. We have a little um, kind of market that people can purchase things to go with their wines. You know, it, it's just, we're always thinking. There's always something to be considering when it comes to wine. We, we both enjoy it and we love this lifestyle. So um, it will always be part of our life. The art of winemaking really shines through at artisanal wine cellars. My sip and stay adventure in Newburgh is only just beginning.